Homework 3.3, Polynomial Division, Factor Theorem, Remainder Theorem. Video 2, homework due Wednesday, May 27th at 11.59 p.m. The following example is associated with question 3 from homework 3.3. Actually, what I should say is the first five questions in the homework are all long division questions. Some have issues that others don't, which is why I'm being more specific here. So what's the issue on this one? Well, it's a very subtle one, but the leading term in the divisor isn't 1. In the previous example, this was just an x, now it's a 2x. That doesn't really change anything we're going to do. That just means we need to do it a little bit more carefully. So let's divide 8x to the third power minus 4x squared minus 20x minus 11 by 2x minus 4. I invite you to pause the video and see if you can do the division without me taking the lead. But I'm going to go ahead and work it out now. So the first thing we do is ask, how many times does the leading term of the divisor go into the leading term of the dividend? So how many times does 2 go into 8x to the third? Now you may be able to look at it and write the results up here, and that's fine. But I'm going to go to the side and write 8x to the third over 2x to get the answer to what is how many times does 2x go into 8x to the third power? Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and we can subtract powers. 3 minus 1 is 2. So 4x to the second power is our first term in the quotient. And remember, if you're not sure what to do, ask yourself, what would I do next if this were just a number long division problem? The answer would be to multiply what I just wrote in the quotient times the divisor. Just remember, when you do the multiplying, you multiply it all. 4x times, excuse me, 4x squared times 2x. 4 times 2 is 8. x squared times x is x cubed. Of course that was going to match. It's supposed to, but we're not done. 4x squared times negative 4 is negative 16x squared. And what do we do next? In a word, subtract. In more words, change the signs and combine. So change the 8 to a negative 8, the negative 16 to a positive 16. And you'll notice I actually scribbled out the minus sign. There's a reason I do that here instead of just drawing the vertical line through the middle of it. In other words, why don't I change a minus to a plus just by doing that? Because let's say I do and then I get distracted by whatever. And then I turn my attention back and I retrace my steps. And then I'm thinking, wait a second. Is this a minus that I've already changed to a plus? Or is it a plus that I haven't yet changed to a minus? But when changing a minus to a plus, if you scribble out the minus and write a plus above it, there is no debate that you have already made that sign change. And now let's combine. Leading terms cancel. That was designed to happen. And when we combine negative 4x squared and 16x squared, negative 4 and 16 is 12. More specifically, negative 4 and positive 16 is positive 12. And when you combine like terms, they are still like terms. Apples and apples stay apples. And then bring down the next term of the dividend. Bring down the 20x, excuse me, the minus 20x, and let's do it again. How many times does 2x go into 12x squared? Well, if we put 12x squared over 2x, 12 divided by 2 is 6, x squared divided by x is x, more specifically positive, because when I write this term in the quotient, I have to write its sign. So positive 6x should be our next term in the quotient. And if we multiply it times the dividend by distributing, Positive 6x times positive 2x is positive 12x squared. If you're saying, I thought they were like terms, but we're not adding. Like terms is an adding subtracting thing. It has nothing to do with multiplying. 6x times 2x is 12x squared, but positive 6x times negative 4 is negative 24x. 
And then it's time to change the signs and combine. The 12x squareds cancel. We expected that. Negative 20x and positive 24x is positive 4x. And bring down the next term. When you bring down the last term, you'll, you know you're almost done. Let's do it one more time. How many times does 2x go into positive 4x? Well, if I put positive 4x over 2x, positive 4 divided by 2 is positive 2, and the x's cancel. So the last term in the quotient is a positive 2. Distribute over here, this is easy, just double everything. I get 4x minus 8. Time to subtract, so change each term's sign, and then combine. The 4x's are gone. Negative 11 and positive 8 is negative 3. And now we're ready to write the remainder. There's actually two ways to write this remainder as part of the quotient. The way that always works is to write a plus sign, put a fraction, put the divisor underneath, and then whatever the remainder is, write it on top. So plus negative 3 over 2x minus 4. But it would also be correct, in my opinion, cleaner, if you were to pull the negative out, put it in front, and just write minus 3 over 2x plus 4. But if you just want to be consistent, just put a plus, put the remainder on top of the divisor, and then it's over. There is one more issue with long division, which I'm going to point out in the next example. 